responses to them from civil society organizations, international institutions, and the United Nations climate change policy making process. Thank you. Hi, good evening everyone, I'm Stacy, and I'll be doing a little introduction about what you've been doing. So on behalf of our clients, Brighter B and Humane Society International, we have prepared three projects regarding the impact of animal agriculture on climate change. Those target finance, women and gender, and youth involvement in the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which we will refer to in our presentation as the UNFCCC. So why animal agriculture? The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has calculated that the global livestock sector actually is responsible for 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions, which breaks down to 37% of global methane emissions, 65% of nitrous oxide emissions, and 9% of carbon dioxide emissions. Carbon dioxide is the most referenced greenhouse gas in climate change discussions because of its longer lifetime in the atmosphere. However, methane and nitrous oxide are actually more potent in shorter time periods. 21 times more potent for methane and 289 times more for nitrous oxide. Also, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change recently re-evaluated methane on a 20-year time frame as opposed to the usual 100-year time frame, which means that current effects from methane have not been measured in their entirety. Despite these facts, animal agriculture has been left out of the UNFCCC dialogue. International discussions have failed to address efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and failed to promote adaptation measures to deal with the effects of animal agriculture. In addition, more than 60 billion animals per year are raised across the globe to produce animal-based food, which include meat, dairy, and eggs, mainly through factory farm systems, also known as intensive or industri industrial production methods. With the projected 34% increase in global population size by the year 2050, the world will require an estimated 70% increase in food production. And with meat-based diets on the rise across the globe, this means an increased intensification of an already stressed and environmentally threatening sector. For these reasons, we feel that it is necessary to bring animal agriculture to the table at international climate negotiations. Thus, we would like to start off by presenting finance guidelines to promote a more sustainable and humane animal agriculture industry. So we are the finance group. I'm Beth, this is Lauren and Evan, and we're going to talk about financing humane and sustainable climate-friendly food systems for the future. So we were asked to produce a set of guidelines for the World Bank and Green Climate Fund to promote the financing of humane, sustainable, climate-aware food systems rather than the expansion of factory farms. The big picture and driving force behind this whole project is the link between agriculture, climate change, and poverty. Unsustainable agricultural production exacerbates climate change, and climate change exacerbates poverty for those who are dependent on agriculture for their livelihoods. It is a vicious cycle, and our hope is to stop it by encouraging financial institutions to fund less factory farming and more humane, sustainable food systems as a pathway to reducing poverty and reducing climate change for developing countries. In order to get our point across, we compared factory farming and humane sustainable agriculture in order to show the negative impacts of factory farming and the benefits of the alternative. Lastly, we called for change by providing the World Bank and Green Climate Fund a set of recommendations to better their agricultural funding for the future. So first I'll start with some background in information on the institutions that we're trying to influence. The World Bank is a, is a group of fam five international institutions that provide loans and grants to developing countries. The group consists of a public sector as well as a private sector arm called the International Finance Committee or the IFC. The World Bank's primary mission is to reduce global poverty and this is why we chose a poverty focus for our project in order to better appeal to them. The Green Climate Fund is a newly developed fund that was established at Copenhagen Summit 15 in 2009. The fund is designed to aid developing countries in reducing emissions and adapting to climate change. 
and aims to receive contributions from both public and private sources to fund projects that support developing countries. So what is factory farming? We define it as the consolidated industrial operation that produces food in high volumes to maximize profits with little regard for the environment, food security, and animal welfare. While factory farming produces food in high volume, it does, not, it does this at the cost of many social and environmental externalities. Looking at some of these externalities in greater detail, factory farming is a major contributor to global greenhouse gases exacerbating climate change. It directly degrades land and water quality by improper management of waste products. It also is a main driver of deforestation as many forests are cleared to create arable land for growing livestock feed. Intensive livestock farming itself is an inefficient use of calories and contributes to food security issues across the globe. For example, the production of one calorie of animal protein requires, requires more than 10 times the fossil fuel input as a calorie of plant protein. Many of these industrial agricultural projects are designed with the intention to reduce poverty and increase food security. However, in reality, industrial agriculture often exacerbates poverty and food security issues by degrading land and displacing farmers. On the other hand, humane, sustainable, climate-friendly agriculture, or as we will refer to as humaneable agriculture for the remainder, the presentation, uh, are practices that will sustainably increase agricultural productivity while simultaneously helping farmers adapt to changing climate and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Some examples of humanable agriculture include soil conservation, agroforestry, and livestock management. Soils have the potential to sequester carbon through soil conservation practices. An example of soil conservation is minimum tillage, which reduces the need for nitrogen fertilizers and increases the water holding capacity of soils. Agroforestry, which combines trees and shrubs with crops, has many of the same benefits, contributing to reforestation and reducing the need for nitrogen <coughs> fertilizers. Sustainable livestock management, such as improved diets and grazing practices, protect water and soil, minimizing greenhouse gases, and creating a humane environment for livestock. Although we would discourage livestock use altogether, this is a more sustainable pathway than factory farming. These are just a few of the possibilities with humanable agriculture. Overall, these practices combine enhance the achievement of national food security issues and development goals without the use of livestock intensification. Okay, so where is the money? Before we talk about the money, it's important that we understand the definitions of adaptation and mitigation because funding is often focused on one or both of these terms. So adaptation is an adjustment in natural or human systems in response to actual or expected climatic stimuli or their effects, which moderates harm or exploits beneficial opportunities, while mitigation is a human intervention aimed at reducing the sources or enhancing the sinks of greenhouse gases. So first we wanted to give a broad overview of global agricultural funding. So from 2007 to 2008, $7.2 billion was distributed towards agricultural product projects directly. However, it's difficult to determine how much of this money went towards factory farming versus humane or sustainable farming. The UNFCCC estimates that we will need an additional $14 billion annually by 2030. That being said, there are current gaps in funding. For example, this graph shows that if the Copenhagen Accord is met, there will be $100 billion for mitigation by 2020. However, it's estimated that by 2030, 140 to $175 billion will be needed. So first, now we're going to talk specifically about what the World Bank is doing. They're doing a great deal to fund agricultural pro projects. By 2012, the World Bank wanted to increase their funding for agriculture to $6.8 billion annually. In 2011, they reached $5.7 billion. However, Bretton Woods, a private organization, showed that one third of this money was being invested in agribusiness by the IFC, the private sector arm of the World Bank. Next, the Green Climate Fund. Um, as a new fund, they currently haven't funded any projects yet but they're in the process of securing $100 billion annually, and we hope that this money will help to uh, reduce some of the gaps that we were just talking about. So 
So in summary, we want the World Bank and Green Climate Fund to follow humanable agricultural projects that consider climate change, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, reduce poverty, and blend adaptation and mitigation. We do not want it to fund factory farming, degrade cropland, pollute water resources, and release large amounts of greenhouse gases. Before we can provide recommendations to the World Bank and Green Climate Fund, we looked at some of their projects and compared them. Based on the comparison shown here, you can see that while the World Bank is taking steps towards funding more humane and sustainable projects, they are still funding those that lead, de lead to deforestation, land degradation, and large amounts of greenhouse gas emissions. Once these sort of kind of projects were out there, we devised a set of recommendations that urge the Green Climate Fund and the World Bank to fund more sustainable pathways. We first came up with a set of recommendations that apply to both the World Bank and the Green Climate Fund. First, they must fund humane, sustainable, climate-friendly food systems and not agribusiness. The World Bank and IFC have continued to finance projects which are detrimental to the environment by supporting agribusiness and industrial agriculture. They must also consider climate in all future agricultural investment. For the most part, climate change has been sidelined from the agricultural discussion in the UNFCCC, which will be an issue for the Green Climate Fund to overcome. Both institutions must work to not only bring climate into the discussion of agriculture, but also set the stage for future agricultural investments that are climate aware. And finally, they need to fund adaptation and mitigation together. Neither adaptation nor mitigation can be truly effective alone. Simply using adaptation is not a viable solution because 